When the first vehicle in the convoy suddenly blew up, the Russian mercenaries knew something was wrong. Their objective, to capture an oil field in eastern Syria, was supposed to be a routine mission. The enemy, they knew by then, would have fled long ago at the sight of 500 battle-hardened Russian and Syrian fighters. 500. But instead, the attack had come to an abrupt halt, and explosion after explosion shook the ground. It wasn't long before AC-130 gunships, Predator drones, Apache helicopters, and fighter jets were circling over the battlefield. We know all about these jets after our last video. They are not one to fuck with. Raptor. The Raptor, Warthog. the Warthog. There's a couple on there. Yeah. AC-130, I think, was on there. Serious. Pounding the attackers from every imaginable angle. What the Russian forces didn't know was that the oil field was not defended by any fighters, but by American special operations forces supported by the most powerful air force in the world. Special ops. And Don't so, mess with a few them. Minutes, the routine mission turned into hell on earth <laughs> and into one of the deadliest engagements for the notorious Russian mercenary group Wagner. To Wagner. stop the rapid advance of the self-proclaimed Islamic State, the U.S. had deployed troops in Syria since 2014. They supported the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF. A year later, Russia also intervened in the fight against ISIS, but on the side of Assad's Syrian government forces. The SDF and the Syrian army were never seen as allies, but in keeping with the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, both parties at least mostly avoided each other. Mm -hmm. After years of fighting, both armies managed to drive out the terrorists, and by 2018, ISIS held only a fraction of its original bases. To prevent an unintended conflict between Russian and U.S.-supported armies, a deconfliction line was formed along the Euphrates River, which effectively bisects Syria. Deconfliction line, so they're saying, cross this line, and it's beef. But there's a line, and they, if we respect the line, no one's going to have a problem. Quite a few countries have a line, isn't it's it? It's just a line. Yeah. <laughs> Deconfliction, I like that. In addition, both parties were able to contact each other through special telephone channels that were <laughs> kept clear at any time. But despite all these precautions, on February 7th, just a few miles from the Euphrates River, the first deadly clash between Russians and Americans since the Cold War occurred. Oh, shit. Late in the evening of February 7, 2018, 500 Russian and Syrian fighters attacked an SDF military base. The base was located about five miles east of the Euphrates River and controlled one of the country's main oil fields. Thus, like most oil fields, the area was officially on the Syrian Democratic side of the ceasefire line, but this did not stop the Syrian-Russian troops in any way. The attackers were supported by various Russian-made battle tanks, as well as mortars, artillery, and rocket launchers, Damn. with which they began shelling the SDF base without warning. They were proper equipped for it. They probably thought, yeah, we can get away with this one. We, we got this on lock. Let's see the retaliation. That's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. In addition, Russian Air Force aircraft were on standby to provide air support, but initially remained on the ground. However, while everything was initially going according to plan for the attacking forces, the phone suddenly rang in the Russian headquarters near the Euphrates. A representative of the U.S. military was on the line and wanted to know whether Russian fighters were currently trying to take the military base at the Conoco oil fields. Here, not only the Syrian Democratic Forces were under heavy artillery fire, but also their allies, American Green Berets, Army Rangers, Marines, and various support units. After the Russians had explicitly denied the question whether the enemy were their troops, it was clear to the caller. Whoever was currently taking fire at his soldiers, he would feel the full force of the American military in just a few moments. <laughs> they wanted to make sure whoever they're about to destroy knows they're about to get destroyed. Imagine just hearing you're going to get the full force of the American Mate, military. America has so much funding into their military It's insane. Forces. It's insane. It was nearly a trillion dollars. And I think it was 800 mil we read. Or yeah. 800 bit. Is it a million? Or... Yeah, it was a million. So nearly a billion dollars. And um, and that's the stuff that was just on the book. So there's so much you don't know about. That we don't, don't mess know. with America, man. Yeah. Don't mess with them. Crazy. The response to the attack on their military base was prompt and tremendous. Even before the Russian convoy reached its starting position for the attack, 
the first and last vehicles were taken out in a classic ambush maneuver, trapping the forces in the middle. The missiles came from an American Reaper drone, which had Reaper. been targeting the convoy for some Jeez. time. However, to the Russian Wagner mercenaries on the ground, the drone was invisible, and they had a hard time understanding where the fire suddenly came from. That is mad. They're looking in the air like, where the fuck was that? Like, yeah. they're getting bombs. That's probably why they call it the Reaper. Just, it does dirty damage, and it's just hard to, like, even know, like, as if it's the Grim Reaper himself. It didn't take long for more shells to hit, spreading chaos on the battlefield. American artillery and high Mars rocket launchers engaged the convoy, mad. inflicting numerous casualties. While the Russian forces were still trying to realize what was happening, four <laughs> Apache helicopters appeared on the horizon. Although the gunships were several miles away, no one could hide from their precise infrared optics. The laser-guided Hellfire missiles found their target in the Russian battle tanks, while the 30mm cannon forced the enemy infantry to withdraw. Few of them were able to escape the explosive shells, and a Russian survivor later reported that they suffered about 200 casualties within the first few minutes. Oh my God. 200 in the first few minutes. Is that mirror does that look like fucking fireworks for New Year's or it something? <laughs> they said, here's a New Year, boy. Bah. But it's much more than just fireworks. Yeah, yeah. they're blowing them up. Yeah. That's crazy. Almost half of the entire attack force. The reports that are on TV about, well, you know, about Syria and the 25 people that are wounded there from the Syrian army and, well, to make it short, we've had our kicked. <laughs> so one squadron lost 200 people. Right away, another one lost 10 people. And I don't know about the third squadron, but it got torn up pretty badly too. So three squadrons took a beating. The Yankees attacked. First, they blasted the out of us by artillery. And then they took four helicopters up and pushed us in a merry-go-round with heavy caliber machine guns. <laughs> Too much strategy. They were all showing the holy out of it. And our guys didn't have anything besides the assault rifles. Nothing at all. Not even mentioning shoulder-fired Sams or anything like that. So they tore us to pieces for sure. Put us through hell. And the Damn. Yankees knew for sure that the Russians were coming. That it was us. Russians. Our guys were coming to commandeer an oil refinery, and the Yankees were holding it. We got our f beat rough. My men called me. They're there drinking now. Many have gone missing. It's a total. Do you think a lot of those Russians that survived that attack probably said, "Fuck this! I don't want to be here," and like just went missing and just tried to like leave? Maybe. I mean, then again, I feel like whoever joins the army. But then I guess also back then, a lot of men didn't have a choice mm. to join. So yes, I guess in a fear of, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, the realisation of that as well, I don't want to die, I'm going home. If Yeah, or I'm just running away somewhere because I don't, can they just go home like that? Because I'm sure if they go home like that... Well, not go home, they, but they, just get away from the situation. Yeah, get away, but yeah, because yeah. they can't just disappear because obviously once you're in the military like that, if they find you, I've guess in Russia, yeah. you're pretty much fucked, right? Because you, I'm guess you're legally bound in a way. But um, yeah, they probably said for my life, let me try flee somewhere, and yeah. I'll work it out later what I'm gonna do. Missing, yeah, missing. Sucks. Another takedown. While AC-130 gunships circled over the battlefield, engaging individual targets, Hello, large B-52 oh strategic God. bombers completely destroyed the convoy. Those who managed to escape hid in buildings, but even there, they were not safe for long. Late into the night, the attackers were hunted by F-15 fighter jets, whose bombs penetrated even the best cover. The new fifth-generation air superiority fighter F-22 Raptor that was also used. That's the Raptor. But for the soldiers on the ground, it no longer made any difference who was pounding them. The Russian contractors did not stand a chance against the American Air Force. Although there were rumors that some pilots from the nearby Russian air base were asking for permission to take off, the blue-painted Su-34s and 35s remained on the ground. The attackers' casualties were so heavy that in the middle of the battle, one of the Russian commanders called in and asked for a ceasefire, indicating that Russian military was in contact with the attacking fighters after all. Crazy. A published call from a Wagner mercenary sums up events in Syria. Just had a call with a guy. So they basically formed a convoy, but didn't get to their positions by some 300 meters. 
One unit moved forward. The convoy remained in place about 300 meters from the others. The others raised the American flag and their artillery. They're so proud of what I, Oi! here goes the flag. Let's just make sure that's up there before we blow people up. Let them, let them know it's us Americans. Yeah, let them know it's us. <laughs> Not tomatoes, tomato. <laughs> started cars really hard. Then their choppers flew in and started and everybody. Ours just running around. Just got a call from a pal. So they're about 215 killed. It's mad than that. They simply rolled ours out hard. Made their point. What the cars were hoping for in there? That they'll fucking run away themselves? Hope to fucking scare them away? Lots of people fucking so bad they can't be fucking ID'd. There no were way. no foot soldiers on the American side. They simply fucked our convoy with artillery. When the battle ended early next morning, there was nothing left of the convoy of vehicles. All combat vehicles have been destroyed, with the exception of a single battle tank and armored personnel carrier. They let them have one tank. <laughs> they said, you know what, before we blow the last one out, we'll, we'll let you keep this one. Just just to prove a point. Just for memories. Just for memories. We so. can take it down, but we're not going to. We'll be nice. <laughs> we'll be nice. Yeah. I feel like America definitely like wanted to send a message with this with this battle. It wasn't just, oh yeah, we're gonna battle and see what happens. It was like, we need to put a message out to not ever fuck with us. Yeah. And this is what you get for trying to mess with them. Yeah. Mm. And it was very the, the message is loud and clear. Very. Of approximately 500 Russian and Syrian attackers, at least 200 were killed or wounded. One of the mercenaries later reported that in some places they found solidified melted sand and gun barrels bent from the heat. There wow. were no casualties on the American side and no reports of damaged aircraft. Only one of the SDF soldiers in the base at the oil field was wounded by Russian fire, but survived. The incident sparked outrage on both Russian and Syrian sides, but since the Americans had repeatedly reassured themselves through the Russian officials, they could not be blamed. According to intercepted phone calls between the leader of Wagner and Russian ministers, the attack was even said to be an order from Moscow. For Wagner Group fighters, the Battle of Conoco Fields went down in history as Red February and was one of their most humiliating engagements. Damn. At least some of them received a medal specially made for this event. It shows a Russian soldier surrounded by flames, heroically shooting at an American Apache helicopter. Basically, you lost, but here's a lo loser's medal just to, you know, respect, rate you for surviving and not dying. Here's a medal for not dying that lost war. They could even call it Red February. Would you even accept that medal? I... Yeah, a you lot basically, of them, you're accepted on the base that you participated in that. I nearly died, but somehow just managed to survive. Yeah, well done on surviving. Look at the photo. They tried to make him look like a hero. From the sounds of it, they were getting destroyed. Yeah, because he's covered in flames, isn't Cut he? Covered fire everywhere. Yeah. It looks like something out of a movie, Rambo style. Fucking <laughs> one v a thousand. Yeah, a scene that probably never took place in this yeah. way. The Syrian Democratic Forces and their American allies had successfully defended the base at the oil field and continued to fortify it. The demonstration of their superior air power was meant to be a warning to any hostile forces That's not to mess with the wrong people. Interestingly, when Syrian and Russian fighters gathered in the area again about a month later, the Americans once more contacted the Russian commander in charge. This time, it was not long after the end of the phone call that the entire Russian-Syrian fighting force hastily withdrew. For those who made it this far, thanks for watching. I didn't know Syria and Russia joined forces. To yeah, I didn't know that America. as well. It's quite interesting. I never knew that. Well, we learned something else there. Mm.